Hello, my name is Grace Jenks. I'm an intern at the Northwest Conservation District. And today I'd like to share with you a presentation all about non-point source pollution. So here's what we'll be discussing today. The differences between point and non-point source pollution, types of pollution, sources of pollution, and solutions to this pollution. Now, point versus non-point pollution. What's the difference anyway? They seem very similar, but they're different. So point source pollution, the Clean Water Act defines point source pollution as any discernible, confined, and discrete conveyance, including but not limited to any pipe, ditch, channel, tunnel, conduit, well, discrete fissure, container, rolling stock, concentrated animal feeding operation, or vessel, or other floating craft from which pollutants are or may be discharged. And please note that this term does not include agricultural stormwater discharges and return flows from irrigated agriculture. Now, non-point source pollution doesn't meet the legal definition of point source because its origins are from multiple places at the same time, rather than one discernible source. Some types of non-point source pollution include oil, pet waste, human waste, litter, sediment, which can be caused by erosion, bacteria, pesticide, herbicide, fungicide, fertilizer, and bird salts, among other types. From left to right, starting in the top corner, we have an oil slick, litter in the ocean, bacteria, bags of fertilizer, and road salt. These are all examples of pollution that can make its way into our environment. Pollution sources. Though there are many sources of non-point source pollution, all sources can be broken up into two categories, urban and agricultural. Please be aware that this is a Connecticut-specific designation and isn't true in every state. There are many sources of non-point source pollution, but we don't know exactly where it comes from originally. We can only guess. Some common possible sources are agriculture from pet waste, animal waste, fertilizer, pesticides, etc timber harvesting, land development, landfills, transportation, mining, including mineral extraction, oil and gas production, marinas and boating, energy production, and hydro modification, and habitat alteration. If you aren't familiar with that last one, hydro modification activities include channelization and channel modification, dams, and stream bank and shoreline erosion, according to the Environmental Protection Agency. From left to right, starting in the top corner, we have a cow whose manure can pollute waterways and the soil, timber harvesting, a landfill, an oil rig, and a dam, which falls under hydro modification. Environmental effects. Non-point pollution, just like any other kind of pollution, can harm the environment. It can wreak havoc on our water systems, the soil, and the air. There are many possible effects on water systems, but here are just a few. Non-point source pollution can affect drinking water supplies, recreational use like swimming and boating, wildlife habitats, especially aquatic ones, and it can create algal blooms, which can lead to eutrophication. Pollution can affect soil in different ways. It can make food production more difficult, disrupt natural cycles of nutrient and carbon cycling, inhibit biodiversity, and negatively affect human health. For the last point, Pollutants in the soil can harm every single part of the human body, everything from the brain to the reproductive system. So it's pretty serious when we have pollutants in the soil. Finally, air. Pollution in the air has dramatic effects on everything, including wildlife habitats and human health. Some concerns include cancer, cardiovascular disease, respiratory diseases, diabetes, mellitus, obesity, and reproductive, neurological, and immune system disorders. Non-point source pollution in the air can be quite noticeable at times. When air quality is poor, there's limited visibility, difficulty breathing for some, and other health problems. So what should we do? Pollution, especially non-point that you can't trace back to a specific source, can be a very daunting topic to approach. Though challenging to implement, there are solutions to this problem. Here are some ways that you, as an individual, can prevent pollution. You could properly dispose of oil and household chemicals, maintain your septic tank, pick up pet waste, create a rain garden, connect downspouts to rain barrels, reduce or even eliminate the use of pest fertilizer, pesticide, herbicide, 
fungicides. Avoid disturbing soil on your property unless absolutely necessary. Install permeable pavement. Wash your car on the grass instead of on asphalt. And for the farmers, you should prevent animals from accessing water bodies like streams, ponds, etc. Here are two examples from that list. On the left, we have a rain garden, which looks as beautiful as it is effective. So essentially, as the rain falls onto the ground, instead of falling directly on the pavement where it would just become runoff and pick up pollutants on the asphalt, it soaks into the ground in this garden where the soil will filter it out. And on the right is permeable pavement, which sort of does the same thing. Instead of the water just rolling off the driveway, it'll soak in. These are both solutions to runoff. They absorb any pollution that may find its way into water. They will filter the water and prevent pollutants from entering the environment. Also with permeable pavement, these individual bricks are quite easy to replace as opposed to repaving a whole driveway. So it could be an expensive cost upfront, but in the long run, it could actually be more cost effective. Above all, it's important to remember that we are just individual people. Don't stress yourself out. We should alter our lifestyles where we can to prevent non-point source pollution from entering our environment, but ultimately the majority of impact comes from factories and industry, which is mostly out of our control, unfortunately. By voting for people who make environmental restoration and protection top priorities, a real tangible difference can be made in terms of non-point source pollution. Thank you for listening. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation all about non-point source pollution. Here are my references, and yeah, I hope you've enjoyed.